Okay, so we're going to do Henry's Law. And so Henry's Law is S1 divided by S... I'm sorry, P1 is equal to S2 divided by P2. So remember, Henry's Law states that a gas will dissolve or be dissolved within a substance depending on the amount of pressure that it is. And we measure pressure in ATMs, atmospheres, KPA, kilopascals, pascal, which is the SI unit, and MMHG, millimeters of mercury. So let's start looking at what we have here. So it says that if we have 0 0.55 grams of dissolved gas in one liter of water at 20 kPa of pressure, how much will dissolve in a 100 kPa of pressure? So let's start looking at this law right here. So we know that um, our S1 is equal to our 0 0.55 grams per liter of solution. We have, and we know that we have, by the way, the reason I got that is I took 0 0.55 grams divided by one liter of solution. Our P1 is equal to 20 kPa. And then we have our P2 is equal to 110 kPa, and S1 would be our unknown. So we would set this up just kind of as a proportion. 20 kPa is equal to x over 110 kPa. And if we're looking at where we got those, those problems are, are those that solution is right here. And you should probably write that down so that you can use that for the test. That would be a really, really good use of your time. Okay, so then we would cross multiply our S2 is equal to 3.03 grams per liter or 3.03 .03 grams in one liter of solution. And so that's how we figure out those. Let's do another problem with Henry's Law. Okay, so let's look at what we have again. So a gas is 0 0.66 grams per liter at 10 atms of pressure. What is the pressure at, of one liter of a sample of gas that contains 0 0.5 grams of gas? So here's what we do know. Our S1, whoops, our S1 is equal to 0 0.66 grams per liter. Our P1 is equal to 10, should be ATMs, so that's a spelling error, autocorrect on my part. We do not know our P2, that is a question mark. And we know our S2 is equal to 1.5 grams divided by one liter or 1.5 grams per liter. So if we set this up, S1 divided by P1 is equal to S2 divided by P2, we would get our 0 0.66 grams per liter over our 10 ATMs, which is equal to 1.5 grams per liter over x, x being 22.7 ATMs. And so it's really, um, this is a really nice little law for understanding solubility of gases. So when do we, when do we use this? When is this law important? Well, how many of you every once in a while like to crack open a nice cold Coca-Cola? Yeah, I got yeah or whatever kind of carbonated beverage that you like, even a carbonated water. Notice when it sits for a while, it doesn't taste the same anymore. It's not quite as delicious. Well, the carbonation in there is actually changing the molecular composition of the pop, and it actually makes it taste better. And so we actually have been adding things like carbon dioxide to a lot of beverages. Um, People, instead of using carbon dioxide because it fizzes and makes things flat very fast, so they still use that in pop and seltzers and carbonated water. But in alcoholic beverages, they're starting to switch over to nitrogen because it doesn't release as fast under cooler temperatures. So as long as you keep it cold, the nitrogen is still in the solution. So it actually works a little bit better for them. It doesn't go flat. 
where it works very well because of the high sugar content pop to keep carbon dioxide in there. Carbon dioxide is a lot heavier than nitrogen gas, but nitrogen gas is where they're going to now because you can have it withstand under a less pressure um, and the nitrogen will stay in there because the nitrogen gas is less mass. All right, that is Henry's Law.